Hi, I'm Duncan Wood, Sage CRM Product Manager for the UK. Well, first of all, um, data mining is the technique of um, looking at data and, and trying to find extra value in it. I mean, the mining analogy is quite good. You know, just as you dig down to find the gold in a hill, um, again, you've got this huge amount of data around uh, customers, but yet without effectively data mining it, maybe you're not making the best use of it. Data mining in a CRM context is all about looking at your customer database and trying to target the customers in the most effective way. So what I mean by this is typically in a business it's the old 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your revenue or profit is probably coming from 20% of your customer base. By using data mining we can effectively identify that customers, our, you know, our most effective customers. And actually moving on even further, approach them in the channels that they would like to be approached in, in a way that works for them. Uh, so with CRM and data mining, one of the obvious things to do is try and target the prospects that are most likely to respond positively to your campaign. Um, a classic example of this is a loyalty program, um, and based on customer usage you can class them as bronze, silver and gold and then actually target each level of customer loyalty differently. I think there are two aspects to the amount of data and privacy that uh, a company should decide on um, to keep about customer and how to use that data. The first and most obvious point is the legislation within the country you're operating with. So for instance in the UK we have the Data Protection Act. Beyond the legal implications of something like the Data Protection Act, I think a company really should be approaching their customers and understanding how they want to be approached, how they want to be contacted. And it should be a collaborative effort between the, two, between the business and the consumer or customer. Um, and they should respect the uh, rights of the customer to decide on things like that. And, the more we can use technologies like self-service for a customer to self-select how they want to be contacted, what level of contact they want, I think that would be all, all to the good of the company that's doing that. I think it's critical for a company to respect customer privacy and it's really about a mutual beneficial relationship between a company and a consumer in this day and age and really it has to be uh, permission based uh, the, you know the, the customer has to have the power to say this is what I want and for you to respect it who within a business should be responsible for data and privacy is an interesting question in fact recently there's been a, a spate of new roles being made in the American market um, of chief privacy officer within the organisations um, I think that's partly because they don't have quite a strong legislation um, like the Data Protection Act in the UK so they've actually taken the initiative on themselves to put somebody in place to be responsible for that. I think the first risk for a business uh, if they do have uh, data privacy issues uh, is that it's going to hit the press. Um, it's quite a high profile subject. The press pick up on it. They like making stories around it because it's bad news. Somebody drops a CD, it's got customer details on. Uh, in this day and age that's quite a big story. I think um, the main risk for a high profile business where there is a data problem or a privacy issue, you know, let's say they publish the customer details on the internet accidentally or drop a CD, is that it's a very hot topic in the press these days. And it's also a hot topic for consumers and customers. Um, in this day and age of web trading, the, the image of the company that you're trading with is absolutely integral. Um, I mean, you wouldn't go on Amazon if you thought they were going to lose your details or publish your details about what books you bought, etc.